the goal of tonight is really prayer. It's, it's, it's that we uh, welcome if you're visiting with us online tonight. Um, uh, this is our midweek service. We're going to be talking about prayer tonight. So, um, um, so if, like, share, do all those things you can do. I'm going to even share mine on my pages, but uh, we'll let you have a couple minutes to get online. But I want you to hear what we're going to talk about prayer tonight. Um, I really believe that what God has been saying to me is, if my people will pray, what is on my heart first, I will answer what's on their heart. And what happens is most people are only praying what's on their heart. And not understanding that how many, you know, we'd all like more answered prayer. I mean, that's just the answer. I mean, I, I mean, if I ask that question, no matter where I ask it, how many people would like their prayers answered? Everyone would say yes. No one's sitting there going no. But there's a mindset with prayer that most people don't have. And prayer becomes a duty, an obligation, and something you're supposed to do. And you, if you, by the way, attitude into prayer is huge. Like if you think you could go before God with a bad attitude and get him to answer prayer, you are kidding yourself. You are going before the Holy One who created everything. He's your heavenly father, but it doesn't mean you get to, you know, Bill Johnson says it well. If, if he inhabits the praises of your people, who's inhabiting your complaining? And if you're complaining all the time and you feel like you can't get out of it, shut your mouth. Shut it. If you can't speak the right thing, shut it until you get a grip on your emotions and you speak the right thing because you are creating an atmosphere of virtual destruction and you're going to blame everyone but you for the, for the fact that you created an atmosphere around you that isn't inviting for anybody. But how many people want to invite angels and want to invite the people? It's not our right to have angels. It's not our right to have answered prayer. It's our right to be called the children of God. Everything else requires us to do it his way. He's not going to change it for me. I, I learned that a long time ago. God's just not going to change things for me. He's not going to give me, he really expects me to find his way in the matter. So turn to Matthew chapter six. We're going to talk about prayer. I know I've covered this on prayer again. I'm going to keep doing it until I feel like the body of Christ gets this. And I want to give you some, you know, you might not do this every day, but we're going to have to learn God's way of prayer. We're going to have to learn what, you know, what was so important that the scriptures record. It's the thing that they asked to be taught and he taught them. They didn't ask, teach us how to heal the sick. They didn't teach us how to bring more money. They, they asked, teach us how to pray. Probably because without prayer, teaching you how to heal the sick, all that stuff doesn't work. If you don't have a life of prayer, you won't have a life in Christ. And I think that sometimes we think God just wants to do it. That is deception. In other words, God looks to co-labor with us. He doesn't look like I heard someone say, Sarah didn't believe and she still had a baby, but that's not what the scriptures say. When she, it was announced, she laughed at it. But Hebrew says that she strengthened herself by faith that her body was able to conceive. So after the moment when she was told this year, this time next year, you'll have a baby, she laughed. After that, she changed her posture and decided to believe. And within two months, she got pregnant and had a baby one year later. So it wasn't like, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an automatic. If she had stayed in her posture, she would have still been waiting to have a child. But Hebrews records that she shifted her thinking. And we've got to shift our thinking. And I'm hoping I can help you do that tonight. And I hope if you're watching me, I'm hoping I can help you do that. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm really hoping that you'll hear what Jesus said, maybe for the first time. He says in Matthew 6, when they ask him to teach us how to pray, he said, I just want to focus on the Lord's Prayer, or I actually call it the Disciples' Prayer. Okay, but we'll briefly go over this. Do not pray, you know, we all love to pray. Uh, you know, we if, give people an open mic and they love it because they get to pray before people and share. And I understand that. But I don't want to hear what you have to say publicly if I don't know what you're doing privately. Okay, in other words, 
If you want to have public impact in prayer, you better have private time in prayer. Why? Because he rewards you openly what he sees in the secret place. Okay? So sometimes we try to pray the perfect prayer. Your prayers are never going to be perfect. I'm going to take all the pressure off you. Your prayers are never going to be perfect. Never. You will never pray a prayer so perfect that it is your prayer alone that causes God to answer it. Even your prayers are re-presented uh, through Christ. <laughs> Even your prayers go through Jesus. Jesus and the Holy Spirit help us in intercession. Intercession, you know, I, I wrote this today on Facebook. I'm so glad there's a group of intercessors. And I'm also very sad there's a group of intercessors. Why? Because everyone's supposed to be an intercessor. And the problem is we have offloaded our responsibility on a few old women to sit in the back of the church and pray. We have offloaded our responsibility as kingdom people to pray. And we have offloaded on women, mostly, right, to pray. And we put the burden on them to pray. How many times do you ever hear me put out prayer requests? For me, I expect my, my team, my leaders, my church to pray for me. But my thing is I go and pray. <laughs> That's always been my thing to go in and pray, to go in and find the Lord and pray, to go in and know what his will is and pray. That's always been my thing. I don't call a lot of people for answers. I, I call, call into the Lord. And sometimes I don't have the answer. Sometimes I, I don't call them, but I will go in and pray and I will get a phone call from someone or I will bump into someone. They will give me the answer. But my thing is like, my first thing is I got, I got this, I got something that's better than Google. Sitting right there in my prayer closet. I got the word of God. I got Jesus. I got the Holy Spirit. I got the Father. And I want to offload this wonderful privilege called intercession and prayer to someone else. It's like, you know, some people, to be honest with you, the reason a lot of people don't have a breakthrough in worship is they offload the worship. They don't sing. They sit and they go and they think that's worship. That is not worship. You cannot, you cannot praise the Lord in your own method. You must praise him according to his method. Otherwise, you don't get access. He doesn't sit there and say, sit down and I will come to you. He doesn't say that. He says, draw nigh to me. You cannot draw nigh to God unless you are praising him. We can enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. You cannot come into his presence. You cannot draw nigh to him without praise. But they're praising and you think, well, they're setting an atmosphere. Oh yeah. But if you want what they're getting, you're going to have to enter into you might just begin the overflow. And we have trained the church to offload our responsibility as a family off to leaders. So how many times do we often sit there and say, pastor, pray for me? And my question a lot of times is, are you praying for you? Because my prayer is going to be, Lord, get him to pray. Because I get tired of trying to pray a magical prayer on someone who doesn't have a prayer life. I get, I get frustrated with those kind of prayers. So I feel the Lord is like calling us to this place of prayer that maybe we have never fully as a company of people. Imagine if everyone in the church, not just our church, every church was praying, really praying. Do, you, do we actually think that the Lord is saying it's not the time for my glory to come upon a city? Do we actually, do, have, we off, have we so deceived ourselves to think the problem is the Lord and his timing? Because now we're getting accusatory. He never sit there and said, when I feel it's right, I'll heal your land. What do you say? If my people who are called by name, my name will repent and pray. See whose responsibility is? See, Israel probably thought at that time too, because they would sit there and say, God, why have you done this to us? Because you forsook me. <laughs> That's the result of forsaking me. 
but return to me. He didn't say, I'll return to you. He said, return to me and I'll return to you. I'm just, we've got to get this right because we're at a critical moment in time where the world is trying to take over our, you know, the world system is trying to take over everything to the point, even the church. Forget about the other six mountains. If we can't get the church mountain right, we're going to have a tough time with the other six. And so prayer, you know, we don't need, a, we don't need, um, I, I love all the other stuff, but all the other stuff has to come from the foundation of prayer. All right. Jesus says this. In this manner, say manner. Manner doesn't mean, manner doesn't mean pray this. He's giving us an outline. He's giving us a formula or a pattern to pray. Because there, you know, a lawyer knows how a court system works, doesn't he? Lawyer knows, like, you know that you go in first, you're going to be seated, and then the judge is going to come in, and they're going to say, all rise, and you stand up, and he sits down, and they say, you may be seated. And then the judge calls it to order. The bailiff goes, starts to, they all know this. The, the, the lawyer doesn't go and just do something. He knows the order. And if he violates the order, you know what he's in? You know what he's in trouble for? It's called contempt of court. And now he can be fined and thrown in jail for changing, for not doing it by the protocol of the judge. See, we actually think it doesn't matter. That's what the church actually believes as long as you pray. No, this isn't something you're supposed to do 8,000 times and have no results. But if you have no results, stop blaming God and find out why you're not having results. It's the same thing comes with praying this for the sick. If you're not having results, figure out why. If you're praying prayers, if it be thy will, and you're not having results, guess what? You must change what you're speaking. You must believe it's his will. All right, now I want to tell you something. <laughs> He says in verse six, but when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in a secret place and your father who sees in secret will, say will, will. reward you openly. Does it say he might reward you? Mm-hmm. He will reward you. This is Jesus speaking of our father in heaven. Number one, he tells us to call him our father. Okay, which is a big deal. I've already talked about that before. That we get to come and call him our father, not God, not Lord, but Father. I'm his child. Okay? Doesn't mean I don't have protocol, but he's still, I still get to call him father. The, the world doesn't, they, they look for God. They look for whatever. Who created the universe? I'm talking to my father. Okay? All right. But what if you actually believed that when you prayed, you would be rewarded? What if you actually believed that? And the reason I know people don't believe that is people don't pray. <laughs> it's not that we're lazy, it's that we're in unbelief. Because <laughs> we do what we need to do to survive. It's not that we're lazy, it's that unbelief has captivated our hearts and not faith. Jesus said, What the Father sees in secret, the Father will say, Will. Reward you openly. He will do it. Not he might. Not he'll think about it. When he, what's great about, about this is Jesus never said pray and ask the Father to come. Because the Father's already there. He's already waiting for you in the secret place. Because the secret place is in him. Who dwells in the secret place of the Most High? When you close your door and you go to pray, he's already there. It's not an if, it's not a maybe, it's an absolute. But if I don't believe that, I am in unbelief and everything I do from this point on is going to be an unbelief and I will not have anything I've asked for in unbelief, no matter how many times I ask for it. It's not how many times you ask for it that gets it done. It's faith. James says, do not think anyone thinks that he asks doubting that he's going to receive anything from God. 
That's a pretty strong word. And we got to understand that. So instead of working on um, other things, maybe we should work on our faith. Maybe we should discover what faith is again. Because I, I, and then Margaret's heard me say this for, I don't know, 10 years. The problem with a lot of the church today, the millennials especially, is they didn't grow up on faith. They didn't hear the messages of the faith of the 70s and 80s and into the 90s. They came right into this era of God so loves you, he wants to do everything. And so they have no understanding of faith and they, get, they think that they don't understand it. And some of them get so sidetracked with unbelief that they think it's God saying no. God has a prescribed manner and we're not going to, in this manner, if you don't do it this way, then God's not changing it for me. I, I learned this a long time ago. I mean, right when I got saved, I, I was Catholic. I realized, you know, when someone told me this was truth, I went, wow. And it's really important we get this because um, I, get, I get burdened by people's ineffective praying because they want me to pray a prayer that they themselves won't. They, they, we, we, you actually think that I am going to somehow move the mountain for you when you won't be in faith. Jesus didn't, you know, you notice Jesus didn't do anything in unbelief. How many know he says he went to Capernaum and couldn't heal many people because of their unbelief? How many know there was more than a few sick people in Capernaum, but he only healed a few sick people? Why? Because there's only a few people that were in faith. That's Jesus. Jesus is perfect theology. Jesus, Jesus could ask any other thing of the Father, but Jesus could not ask anything. For anyone with unbelief. He didn't sit there and say to the person, you know, I know you don't believe. I know you don't believe in God. I don't believe anything he says, but here. But everyone who's, you know, a lot of times his answer was, your faith has made you well. According to your faith, let it be unto you. So how do you think faith is going to play a bigger role in this? then maybe we thought it would. But God loves me. He does love you, but he's still God. He loves you enough to not let you be a spoiled brat. But he gave you the opportunity. Intercession is the grandest pleasure of all that God has given his children the opportunity to co-labor with them on their knees. <laughs> to shape history in prayer. Doesn't mean we don't go out, but if we don't pray, let's not go out. Let's, let's pray first before we go out. If we don't pray, we're not going out. We're not going to have the impact. Prayer might be the, 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 the obstacle to prayer. The obstacle to us seeing the kingdom is prayer. The obstacle to prayer is unbelief. And part of that unbelief is, I don't know if that hears me. I don't know if that will answer my prayer. Yet everything Jesus told us was a yes. But for some reason, we but see, like, if I don't believe Jesus, I'm calling him a liar. Not openly, maybe. You know, how I many when you had kids, you, you tell them something, they go, they doubt you. And you go, just believe me. And yet he's God. He has a right to say that to me over and over again. So he says, our father in heaven, what a great, he doesn't want you to pray to God. Jesus doesn't want you to pray to God. He doesn't want you to pray to the Lord. He doesn't want you, he wants you to pray to your father. He wants you to know that part of this process is a family business exchange. Part of this is not a CEO. This is not a king. He wants you to pray to him as your father. A family intimacy, the way a father talks to a son, not like you see in British royalty, but a father who's joyful in his son and delights when he comes to him and prays. That's what he wants, the image he wants us to have. But he doesn't want you to sit there and say this because a lot of, I hear people pray this all the time. Our father, 
who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. And they just start repeating the prayer. When it says, your kingdom come, your will be done, do you know he doesn't want you to pray? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Remember, he says in this manner pray. He doesn't want you, you're supposed to know what the Father's will is. Why do we have visions, dreams, and all that? So he's telling us what he wants done. But we don't, but we don't, we don't pray that. We don't shift our prayers to what he is showing us. That's where prayer becomes repetitious, becomes boring. See, we, we might want to pray all the stuff we want, but what does he want? And I can't find out what he wants unless I offer myself up as a living sacrifice where I can discover what is the perfect will of God, even the perfect will of God for me, it says, in the Amplified. These are all important. But what if you woke up in the morning with this attitude, I'm going to go spend time with God in prayer and everything I pray is a yes. You know, we often say green light, not red light. People ask me all the time, should I pray for the sick? I'm not giving you permission. They go, why not? Because God already gave you permission. Who am I to take it away? I don't want you to think that I can take away the permission he's given you. I tell people that. They go, well, no, my last pastor, I don't care what your last pastor did. In here, we believe God. Amen. He told us to pray for the sick. Yeah, right. So we're going to pray for the sick. Yeah. You don't need permission when he said do it. He said go, but I don't know where to go. Just start going. It's easier to steer a ship that's moving than one side to the dock. Yeah. A rudder doesn't work unless it's moving. It's just a big wedge of wood underneath the ship unless it's moving. It can't turn anything. It's, matter of fact, useless next to the dock. In this manner, your kingdom come. So, what has God been speaking to you about the kingdom? What his will is for the nation, for your city, for your home? What's his, what has he been showing you? Why do you think he's been showing you that? Well, he's going to do it. No, he's not. He won't do it unless you begin to pray it back to him. That's him giving you his will. That's not him telling you what he's going to do without you participating. When I think about the, the revival at, in Ireland, Scottish revival of 48, 49, what was so amazing about that is they were in prayer, the two women, and she had a vision about revival. And she said to her sister, I saw a vision where all the children, that the youth were in our church. They had no youth in their church at all. He said, I saw the church filled up with the young. And at that point, in the city and all the free churches, there was no youth in public worship. And she told the pastor, the pastor says, what do you think we should do? And she said, we should pray. At least two times a week, we're going to gather to pray. And they began to pray what he had showed them. We don't do that. We declare it, which is awesome. Which we should declare. But if we're declaring without praying, it's empty words. Prayer is the, the thing that fills up the fuel tank that gives it energy to go. Without prayer, nothing works. Everything Jesus did came out of prayer. Not out of his identity as the son, but out of prayer. He prayed. He prayed in the night. He prayed over the through the night. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. Why do you think they said to him, teach us how to pray? Why? Because you pray differently. You do differently. You speak differently. We realize it all comes from this relationship of intimacy with, the, with God. I don't even know if they knew our father there, but with God. That you have this intimacy, you have this relationship to pray, and we see it because God rewards you. We see what God does with you. Teach us how to pray. John taught his disciples how to pray. The Pharisees teach their disciples how to pray. But we don't want to pray like them. <laughs> Why? Because we don't see the miracles in them. Teach us how to pray. What a, what a wonderful invitation he gave them. <clears throat> your will be done on his, as earth and heaven. So he's showing his will. Now he said, give us this day our daily bread. He does not want you to pray that. See, the problem with non-specific prayers is you don't know if they're answered 
and it doesn't build relationship. When you pray non-specifically, you actually pray something that cannot build intimacy. If I say non-specific words to my wife, there's no intimacy involved. Do you understand? I mean, you know that you, you, know, you can say I love you, but if you tell them why you love them, it has more intimacy involved when you're specific, right? Am I right? Okay. Everyone has ever been in love? <clears throat> All right. Intimacy is built through prayer. <clears throat> he wants, so when he says pray your daily things, you should know what your daily needs are that day. He doesn't want you to play. And this is where I say, you can have 200 prayers answered before the end of the year. Why? Because you should have 10 or 15 things on there every day. Everything that you need. He didn't say pray for what you think is important or big. What do you need today? Well, I need this much money. I need this. I need, I have this meeting. I have this business. Meeting. I have all these. I have to do it. But, and there might be 10, 15, 20 things on there. Pray them. Ask them for them. But don't do it until you seek this kingdom first and that his stuff first. And that's the order. And that's why. See, I really believe, you know, we're going to learn this yet, that God really, he really wants to be first. He's not going to give you something new every day for his kingdom. He's not. He's not going to change his mind every day. You know what I mean? And every day you get up, he's not going to have you pray something else he's going to do. The problem with sometimes is we're overloaded in what we think the Father wants done. And we don't know how to dissect that, yes, that one has the spirit on it. And this is what we need as a group to go into and pray. The specificity that they went into in the Scottish revival, the Welsh revival, in the Azusa Street, in the past moves of God, the, the way they went after it with specificity, I think is the right way to say it. They went into it and they, they knew what they were going after. Do you understand? They were specific because God had said something and someone said, that just moved heaven, you know, let's go into that one. Let's pray that one as they got more and more. Sometimes when we pray as a group, we're praying in 18 different directions because we're more focused on what we're getting than what we're praying. And we have to learn how to, re we, have to we have to pray, find out what God's will is, but we might pray that for a year. When Bill Johnson gets up and says, I really think God wants us, we are, there's a new season of grace coming upon us. Do you know what everyone in the house begins to pray for? That grace. He's not saying that so they go, hey, woo! He's saying that to call the house to order. This is what I want us to focus on. The more we can do that as a people, as a house, anything, the more weight we're going to have, the more, more momentum we're going to get. The problem is, is most people wanting their stuff to be done, not before his kingdom. He will answer your daily needs, but he might not give you your desires yet. He'll always give you your daily needs, your desires or something else. Desires, I have to be pleasing. When I delight myself in the Lord, he will give me the desires of my heart. Desires are different than needs. I'll give my kids what they need, but I might not give them the new car they want. Right? That's the way it works. All right? First, we have to learn his kingdom. And sometimes, I don't care how long, sometimes we're so focused on us. I always tell this to people. If you'll focus on the kingdom, he'll focus on you. If you really focus on the kingdom, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. In other words, all your daily stuff, don't worry about it. Just focus on me. See, sometimes we think we got to spend a long time on our needs. We do not. I spend a longer time in worship and focus on what he has spoken he wants in the earth. Then I list my stuff and I get to check off stuff every day. How would you like to have 10 to 15 answered prayers a day? Then start praying for everything and stop thinking it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, whatever it is. Oh, I got the cable guy coming. Lord, let that bill not to be too big. Or Lord, I have to repair my car going. Lord, let that not be too big. Let, let him fix it for free. Or Lord, take care of that need. Whatever it is. How many often we don't pray that? 
How often, you know, we just, we leave that to our wisdom, how to handle it. How many people would like to have more money every day than what you had yesterday? Well, why don't we pray for it? How many people would like, you know, promotions and increase and all that? How many people, you know, you have needs, but you really haven't prayed. You just, you try to suck it up and call it faith. Like whatever you do, Lord, that's not what he said to do. He said to pray, Lord, give me today what I need today. Here's what I need today. Again, specificity, building the relationship, being able to have testimony because I know I prayed that. When I read George Muller and him talking about prayer, praying for specific amounts of money, walking out the door and someone giving him, you know, a one hundredth of it and him stopping and going, oh, thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer. And he would treat that as a sign that God was answering his prayer because, as as, because God gave him something. And he knew before the end of the day, all that money was going to be in. It might not come. If you're asking for $5, you might get from five people a dollar. He would just take whatever he got and start giving thanks as answered prayer. That's how he, how do you have 10,000 answered prayers? By praying 10,000 prayers. You can't have it if you don't pray it. That's why I, I, call, I call this my book of testimony or my book of remembrance. See, God writes a book of remembrance about you, but you have a book of remembrance about him. That's called the book of testimonies. Do you have a book that records what he has done for you? So you can leave it for your generations. Here's all the prayers God answered for me. Think about that. Think about if you could leave it to your kids or your grandkids and they could go through it and go, wow, look at all the prayers God answered for my dad or my, my mom. And how he answered all those prayers. What if you had that? I know you want to leave them your great teaching, but what if you left them a book of testimonies? What if you had a book of testimonies? What if you didn't have to rely on someone's testimony all the time? You had your own such filled faith of life of testimonies of God that you could believe him for anything. You have to build that up. It takes time. It takes, it takes faith. And we're not getting through this without faith. Hope isn't all you need. You need faith. Hope is holy, but it's not faith. Hope is the thing you have in the bridge of faith and patience. In other words, when I pray, some things take time. I need, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to have hope to hope it works out. My hope is the expectation my prayer is answered and it's coming to pass. That's hope. Hope that tries to hang on isn't hope. That's desperation. Hope is not desperate. Hope is not, oh, I hope it comes to pass. I'm not sure. That's not hope. Hope is, man, we prayed. I can't wait to see how God does it. I'm full of hope. Hope is the joyful expectation that God said yes to your prayer and it's coming. That's hope. Hope that's not faith-filled isn't hope. And we got to get back to, you have to go into prayer this way. He will not change you in prayer. So David strengthened himself in the Lord. Then he prayed. He didn't, he didn't go into prayer. He didn't go, God, why'd you do me like this? We do that, don't we? And Seth, go with it. How could I even think you did me like that? How could I even attribute any tragedy to you? Any disease, any sickness, how could I ever put that on you? How could I ever even accuse you of that? You're so good. See, people who can do that haven't been with God. You should read Bill's book, God is Good, but you should read, listen to his testimony of how all he could do, because no prayers were working, all he could do was read his prophecies and read the word of God out loud. That was all. That's all he could do. Couldn't hold down food, nothing. And he could just remember, all he had to do is remember the promises of God over his life. Don't give the enemy atmosphere to work in. Don't give him ground by complaining. Because what happens when you do that? People just start repelling away from you. I don't want, you know, when someone gets in that place, I, I have a difficult time. I don't let my kids do it. We've always stopped them and said, no. 
like my, I've always had this attitude with my kids when they like, you know, you know, kids, you know, you know you've had a few. Um, they, they come screaming and yelling and, and they want something so bad is, ah, you know, and I go, stop, calm down. Let's think about this. I, I mean, like, you know, my kids, you know, kids do this, especially with technology. They would like mess up their computer. They couldn't find a file. They had a game on it. You know, I go, okay, relax. We'll find, we'll fix it. <laughs> no, dad, you don't know. I said, shh, it's okay. Let's, and I'd give, they couldn't find something. Okay, let's just calm down. We'll find it. You don't think well when you're in panic mode. You don't think well when you're in unbelief. You don't make good decisions outside of faith. We don't. People make some of the worst decisions at the worst time, right? Because they, they, they got over it to unbelief and unbelief began to... I either are going to tap into the resource of his wisdom by his presence, or I'm going to tap into darkness wisdom, demonic wisdom. Depends what comes out of my mouth where I'm tapping into it. By faith and praise, I go this way. By complaining and unbelief, I go that way. Which one do I want to tap into? And that's what we want to be very careful about in our life, just to... I believe God, I believe if you start applying what the word of God says about prayer, what Jesus taught us about prayer, I believe that you could have 200 answered prayers by the end of the year. What, what would that do for you going, do you think you'll see better in 2020? Think your vision will be a little perfect when you start realizing how many prayers would you pray if you had 200 answered prayers? Now, if you're praying all the big prayers, and that's all you pray, the problem with only praying big prayers is you have no stepping stone to your faith. Do you understand? Even the disciples couldn't cast out a demon, you know, the spirit out of the epileptic boy because of unbelief. And they had prayed for the sick. But Jesus said, this one comes out by fasting and prayer. Why? You just haven't spent enough time with the Father yet to believe enough for that one. Why? Because that one was manifesting to you openly. And you were going by what you were seeing in the open, not in the secret place. And so what was happening to you in the natural was actually affecting you in your faith. That's what was transpiring there. They were so consumed by the boy throwing himself down and, and that, that, you know, and you get people that go, you know, oh, this is bad. I love those people. Oh, this is bad. I just want to go, please get out of here. That's why you have to close, you know, knock people out of the deliverance room sometimes. Because they're all freaking out. And, and they're right. It's going to kick their butt. Why? Because faith is important. The devil knows how this works. <laughs> why do you think he messes with our faith? Tries to derail it. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, have you ever had someone say to you, if I've ever offended you? I hate cop out stuff like that. Especially when like last week they just done something, which is the reason why they're leaving because you had this fight because they did something and now they go, we, you know, the Lord's told us to leave and we just want your blessing. And if we've ever done anything to offend you, don't, don't ask for non-specific forgiveness. Remember, everything about this is being specific. If you've offended someone, be specific. If they've offended you, be specific. Stop the general, I, 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 you know, Margaret, she's been a leader long enough with us. If I've ever done it, and we go, what? You know what you did. If, I, if I've ever done anything. If? Now, I'm still required to forgive but they're not going to get free when they don't confess it. And you won't get forgiven either. If you say, Lord, forgive me. Cause I know I failed you. How did you fail them? Yeah. Get specific. It says if you, it didn't say if you confess your failure, it says if you confess your sins, not that you're a sinner. <laughs> if you confess your sins, not that you confess you've sinned, but that you confess your sins. That's specific. 
It didn't say to confess that, oh, yes, Lord, I know I sinned. That's not what we ask. He knows that. You're trying to get free. See, if you go before a judge and you go, Your Honor, I'm sure I've broken the law somewhere. If you're going to have mercy on me, right? Not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen. Get specific in the prayer closet. Write that down. Get specific in the prayer closet. Stop hee-hawing around. Get, get, get your book of testimony. Write, the only thing I put in this book, okay, is my prayers. They include what he has had me pray, uh, you know, for the kingdom, and it has what I am praying for. And I don't, I don't necessarily uh, put 20 every day. Some of them are carryovers. But like I pray, I do pray stuff like Lord, blah blah blah, this Lord, blah blah blah, this Lord, blah blah blah, and I and I and I go the day I go, oh, that was awesome, that was awesome. In the middle of the day, I might just pull it out and go, Lord, thank you for answering that prayer, thank you for answering that prayer. And I'm learning even more and more that my my hesitation is to write down everything or to pray everything. That there's even a hesitation to think He doesn't want to hear me pray that. That's not true. It's not true. He's never said to me, you know, son, that's too little. Now, remember, Jesus says, we didn't go over it because I didn't want to go through the whole scripture. He says, um, you won't be heard for your many words. He says, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. But he still says ask. Say, he still says ask. It says, in, it's, it, it's, it's important. Okay, so now I'm going to forgive the debts. I'm going to be specific. This is what so-and-so did to me. Lord, I forgive him for that. Lord, deliver me from evil. What is the evil that's chasing you down? What's the stronghold? What's the weakness? What's the, the part the enemy can get into that you constantly struggle with? Don't just say, deliver me from evil. Lord, I have a problem with unbelief here. Lord, I have a problem with lust here. Lord, I have a problem with faith for money. Lord, be specific. Ask him to help you and deliver you from those things. Again, be specific. It's really important that we learn to be specific in our prayers. It's really important because it will build the intimacy you're looking for. Now I get people say, oh, I've been praying and I don't feel God. You're not, you're, you've, been, you've been praying wrong. I'm convinced you've been praying wrong. Why? Because I know this works. I know God's true to his word. I know that if you obey him, how could you not have what he says? Because he says, if you ask. Turn to chapter 7, verse 7. And I'm going to end with this part right here. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to really try to. Listen to this. Ask, and it will be given to you. Did he say it might be given to you? The church wants to sit there. Now, I, I went over this before. The six things that could keep your prayers from being answered. Okay, I'm not going to do that tonight. I did that, I think, on part three or four of prayer. I went over them, I think. And there are specific things that can uh, keep you. And maybe I'll put them on the uh, Facebook post later so you have them, just for time's sake. But there are some things. I'll give, you, I'll give the scriptures for them too. There are things like you need to pray according to as well. Right? I mean, that just makes sense. I have to pray in faith. I have to forgive people. All these things. These are all things. I have, I, faith is a big thing that I think that we just forget. I think sometimes we don't, just because I moved my lips doesn't mean I'm in faith. Get yourself in faith. How do I get myself in faith? Listen to me on Facebook. How do I get myself in faith? I dwell on his goodness. I fellowship with him. I dwell on his goodness that he is so good to me. And that he so loves me. And I remind myself that he answers my prayers. You understand? I don't just sit down and start asking him. Oh, I did it. I didn't feel nothing. You didn't feel nothing because you didn't take the time to feel his presence. You didn't take time to enter in. All right. This is really, you know, I mean, I go into, I mean, I spend time worshiping him. I, I prayed a couple, like last week I had a prayer time in the morning. And I felt nothing. And I came to the office and I said, Lord, I got to pray to you again because I didn't feel anything this morning. And I'm not even sure if you heard me because I didn't make a connection in prayer. 
And so I, I, what I do when I'm here during the day is I take the sign, I put it in front of the window so they can't see it. You know, if they're walking by, they can't see me. And, and we have a speaker and I had that music going and I just began to worship again and pray. And I went in and I made a connection with God. You know, because I, I just, I felt like I, I went through the motions that morning. And because I kept again distracted, there was things just going on in the house early in the morning. And it just wasn't working, you know what I mean? And I said, okay, Lord, I need to pray again. Because I didn't, I didn't feel anything. And I always feel something. And I didn't feel anything. And I like, so I didn't go, oh, that counts. I went, no, let me just take the time to re-engage you, Lord, to come back and worship you. And pray again. And I had my prayers right now. So it was real easy just to go through and pray. But I, I still had to make that connection with him. And, and that's on me. That's not on him. It's on me. It wasn't like he was going, I'm not connecting with you. It's my job to draw near. It's my job to make the connection. I do this all by faith and grace. I do it all by faith, believing that God will help me do it. I don't do anything on my own fleshly efforts. When I do, I get that misconnection. That's, that's where I know I wasn't in faith and I wasn't in the grace of God to do it. Because I, I just don't believe you can actually do it his way and not succeed. Jesus said, ask and you will be given you. You should underline that in your Bible. You should, you should dwell on that before you go into prayer. He doesn't say, if you ask, it might be given to you. He says, ask and it will. Verse 8 says this, for everyone who asks, receives. Who receives? Everyone, everyone that asks and asks in faith. And faith is, the, faith is the thing. And just because you're asking, just because you're moping, just because you're complaining, just because you want it really bad, isn't the same as praying to him and asking in faith. So before you pray, Listen, if you've been in a bad place, if you've been in an okay place, but if you want to go deeper in prayer, get yourself right in the right attitude when you go to pray. Don't try to get in there. Don't use worship as a means to lift up your spirit. Don't you, because you, if you're doing that, then worship is about you and not about him. So before I pray, I don't try to pray when I'm angry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'll talk to him. I'm talking about my secret place prayer. I don't try to have that time with God in an angry spirit. I don't do angry real well. Like if I get really angry, I'm mobster angry. Like I want to take you out angry. So I don't do angry real well. So I try not to get that angry, okay? And when I go, I got to go pray. Normally what I'm doing is not going, God, I'm, I'm not going, I got to get right because that's not the right attitude. And then I'll pray. Normally I end up asking God to forgive me because I probably went over the line. I don't do angry well. You know, Jesus only got angry a couple of times. I know people getting angry every day a couple of times. We only had Jesus getting angry like once turning over the tables and people try to justify every time they're angry. Like, well, Jesus did. No, Jesus didn't get angry that much. You can, you, not too much, just enough to make me angry. Just enough to make me angry. Everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. Everyone who knocks is open. Asking is for the gifts you need. Seeking is for the face of God. Knocking is for the abiding of his presence. Ask, I need things. Seek, I want your face. Abide, now knock, Lord. Open up to me the door of your chambers so that we can sit together and fellowship, be one together. Amen? Everyone who asks sees. Everyone who seeks finds. Everyone who knocks, it's open to them. There's no doubt in there. You notice how Jesus didn't leave any room for doubt? How come we made room? How is it we've gotten so good at contradicting. See, I think the church has actually talked people out of faith. I think the church has talked people out of faith. See, if you have 25, 30 things you're praying for, he might not answer them one, two, three, four, five. 
but he'll answer something and that's supposed to excite your faith. That's why you got to pray big and strong. Little and, little and big, you got to pray. Why? Because the little things are going to get answered more frequently, which is to pile on the faith. It's to give you the testimony so that you always know that God's hearing you. He literally wants to answer your prayers. I know that because you're his kids. We're his kids. He wants to answer his prayers. But he's not going to answer our prayers if we don't do it his way. Just because we're his kids doesn't mean we get to be lawless. Just doesn't mean we get to do that. Because he really has order in his kingdom. That's how we raise our kids and we're being evil. You know, we don't tell our kids, do whatever you want. And you'll get whatever you want. I mean, no, that doesn't work well. Change, look at, if you're having trouble in prayer and having trouble getting things answered. First of all, this is what I would do. Repent. Doesn't mean God's mad at you. Just repent. Say, God, I have done this wrong and I've blamed you for it. And just repent. Stop avoiding repentance. It's the quickest way out of every hole we've dug for ourselves. Repentance builds a ladder right out of the hole. The problem is not many people want to repent. They want to, again, if I've done anything, Lord, you know what you did. Repent. Get out of there. Okay. Check your attitude. If you don't think, if you're not sure about your attitude, record yourself and listen to it and tell me if you're in faith. Tell me if you're encouraging people yourself, most of all. If every time you hear, because you're hearing yourself. And the problem is you're, what's coming out of your mouth openly, it's what's in your heart. And what's in your heart, you're hearing more than what you speak. You're hearing it in your spirit. So don't repent for what you say. Repent for what's in your heart. I don't repent for what I do. I confess my sins. I repent for my heart. James says you're, you're, you're tempted when you are drawn out from your heart. So I always go, Lord, there's something in my heart that got me. Got me angry, got me messed up, whatever it is. Something in my heart hooked me. It can only hook me because it was willing to be hooked. So Lord, remove that from me. And I, I examine it. I go, okay, Lord. But just, just, and you can do this with the Lord. The other thing I would pray for, the number one thing to pray for, and I'm, I might do this next week, is, is to pray for the Holy Spirit. Anyone could use more manif like more of the spirit in your life, like you you have more of relationship with them. How you know we'll we'll get then get into that next week. But that's I I want you to really begin to explode in prayer. And that, and Wednesday nights, you know, as we grow on the Wednesday night meeting, we're gonna pray. That's what we're gonna do now. Is Margaret's gonna take over and she's got some things that she believes the Lord's been showing her. And so we're going to get behind that and pray. Okay. And we're, we don't have to spend four hours. The, the point is not an exercise. The point is that we do it together. The point is that we do it together. Sunday, I'm going to teach how we are a house, but you are a gate. Corporately, we're a house. Individually, we're a gate. And we're going to have to learn how to keep our gates open. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Let me pray this over you. Then we'll say goodbye to Facebook and then we'll go pray. Father, I thank you right now. Lord, I pray. I'm just praying that we would understand your heart towards us in prayer. You meet us in the secret place. You desire to answer all our prayers. You, you desire to give us our daily needs. You would desire us to co-labor with you and bring in heaven to earth and bring your will into the earth. All these things you have purposed. You have given us this wonderful privilege. Forgive us for doubting you, for blaming you, for thinking that you do not answer our prayers. And then strengthen us, Lord. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. If you're on Facebook, God bless you. And we'll see you next, uh, we'll see you Sunday morning if you're gonna uh, be here then. God bless.